Good evening, everybody. I uh, appreciate you all joining us for our December um, 4th, 2017 Planning Commission meeting. And we'll start things off. Uh, I'll do the Pledge of Allegiance, and Mr. Covert will lead us in invocation. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Father, we just come to you tonight asking for your wisdom in these decisions here tonight. Father, we ask for your blessing on this country and on our government, on our city government. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you all for joining us. Um, I'll call this meeting to order. And if uh, we can do roll call, please. <coughs> Gary Compton. Here. Roy Covert. Here. Vivi Haney. Here. Shannon Mueller. Peyton Parker. Here. Kevin Parsley. Here. Aaron Pinato. Brian Powell. Here. David Dale Tyler. All right, thank you. Um, any questions of the minutes from November? Make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Haney, a second by Mr. Covert. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Right. Uh, first thing I'll, I'll call out on here um, in the event that people are here for this, we have two withdrawals and one tabled item. Uh, the tabled item, B17-66, Harrison French and Associates, 4870 Elm Springs Road, is the last item on the agenda. A variance for a sign ordinance, that has been tabled uh, per the, the client here. And the two that have been withdrawn, and I'll ask Patsy to give an explanation on this. B17-63, Roush Coleman Homes, 2568 Seabright Avenue. And then B1764, Roush Coleman Homes, 7633 Bridgegate Avenue. Uh, both of those for variance uh, for temporary construction office. Uh, the representative from Roush Coleman was in the office this afternoon and has indicated they're withdrawing that request. They will not have temporary construction offices at either of those locations, and they have two weeks to remove the structure that's there at that one location. So they're not bringing it back up, and we won't have temporary construction offices. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure that if you are here for that particular item, that will not be heard at all on the, on the agenda. The only other one that has been tabled uh, per staff is a conditional use, C17-15, Ecoside LLC, 2894 West Sunset. Um, other than that, we will start with a, the public hearing item, proposed amendment to Chapter 32 Downtown Form-Based Code to amend Section 2.1, regulating plan to revise boundary of neighborhood residential type 3. I provided you with maps and you can see it uh, highlighted in this area on the map that you see on the wall. The lots that are on the south side of Grove Avenue that contain single family, they were originally included in neighborhood center type one, no type two, I'm sorry. Uh, they are single family homes. We have had some interest in that area of development wanting to maintain those homes. And because of the size and the cost of remodeling, it would put them in a situation where they have to bring them up to code in order to be able to do that. The cost and the sizes make them where they would have to bring the entire thing into compliance and a single family home is not allowed in a neighborhood center type two. So what we're doing is moving those back into a neighborhood residential area so that those single homes can remain. While we were going through all this development process, that area was one we were really not sure which way it was going to go, so we put it into the, to the other category, and that's the only amendment that's being made to the regulatory plan right now. I'll answer any questions if anybody has any about that. Let's open up to the audience now. Any questions or comments that you have on this? Okay, it's to the commission. This would be a recommendation to city council to approve this amendment to the form based code. Make a motion to forward to city council for approval. Motion by Mrs. Haney. I have a second. Second. Second by Mr. Powell. Compton. Yes. Covert. Yes. Haney. Yes. Parker. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Powell. Yes. Uh, that passes 6 0.
It will go to council next uh, Tuesday evening. Next section, tabled items C17-10, Rob Mooney, 2246 East Robinson Avenue, Use Unit 41, Automobile Sales, and C2. Presented by Jose Andrade. If you'll come to the mic. I'd like to open if, up. If, if you can state your name and address for the record, oh, please. Oh, that's, uh, I'm Daniel Benitez. I'm partner with the Jose Andrade, but. Okay, now wait a minute. We gotta see that you're authorized to represent this request. Venga, venga usted con el interpreter, Okay, so you're talking Oh, they both are here already? Here. Yeah. yeah. Okay, never mind. He's here too. Okay. Que venga, Aaron, do you have the drawing that was submitted that you can put up there to show how they want to lay this out? I'm going to, I'm going to interpret for him. He just okay. Want to yes. Fine. Might want to just move that mic down a little bit. So. <laughs> Is that mic on? Okay, it's we're good. On. We're good. All right, if you want to tell us what we're wanting to do here. Um, he wants to open a car lot. Like a dealership, sell cars. Okay. And they will be used cars, correct? Yes. Now you should have a drawing in your packet that shows how this is laid out. Uh, I have comments on it. Uh, the ingress and egress to the property is acceptable. The off street parking and loading areas were required with particular attention to the items mentioned above seem to be acceptable. Uh, the driveway is of adequate width. They moved the parking back far enough that things can maneuver on the site. The uh, refuse and service areas are acceptable. Uh, utilities are acceptable. They're screening and buffering. You don't show any screening or buffering uh, to the north, which would be required because of the residential to the north. Uh, the sign, you're using an existing sign that's out there, correct? Both signs, yes. Okay. Uh, the yard requirements. And he knows about the screening. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, we need to, it, need, it needs to be identified. You have a location for a dot for a sign. It doesn't tell us what the sign is or what it's going to look like. Uh, are you only using the existing sign and adding to it or are you adding another sign onto that one? I think, well, yeah, we're going to use another sign and add, like, just add it to that one. Like okay, you need to get with the building inspector to make sure that that can happen to get a sign permit if you're approved. Okay. Uh, the yard requirements and open space requirements seem to be acceptable. Um, are you proposing any landscaping on this side at all? No. No landscaping? Okay. Uh, the general compatibility seems to be ex acceptable. It has, has to have paving and striping required as shown on the site plan. All those areas need to be paved where you're going to have vehicles moving around or parking. Okay. And the striping plan that you show on there, it needs to be. And then screening is required to the residential units to the north. Okay. <coughs> okay. Um, do you guys want these? Yes. Yeah. So the landscaping piece, I mean, because I mean, because this would be a conditional use. Yeah. It, um, it, not necessarily a requirement. Right. Okay. But as conditions of the granting the conditional use, they want to add some landscaping work. Okay. okay. Just want to make sure we were interpreting that correctly. All right. Anything else? Any questions or comments from the audience? It's to the commission. Call for the vote. Uh, you know, well, oh, I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, on the landscaping, can, can we, <clears throat> you know, because it's going to be a conditional use with a car lot and there's going to be mic on? Yes. Yeah. It's on. Um, there's going to be so much, you know, just cars there. Is there a way that we can get some landscaping on the sides? 
I, you know, I wouldn't want to go so much in the very, very front where, the, where when you're coming out, it would affect the line of sight of someone coming out with a car. Yeah. But this area, especially, you know, in front of the building and then, you know, back enough from the road to where there's... Yeah, we can. We can put some landscaping. Okay, then you will need to provide us with a landscaping plan so we can see what you're going to put in. Okay. okay. Does the paving now, what what area on there is now paved? It's paved right up to the building, correct? Yeah, it's paved so right up to the So we're not asking, your, Vivi, you're not asking for any foundation landscaping. You're asking for, land, no, just for landscaping on the sides. Right, on the sides, so that when you're driving by and you see that, there's not. Just, okay, you understand landscaping on that green strip that's on each side of the of the parking lots to put some landscaping in there? On each green side? Not all the way out to the street because we don't want to create a hazard for people moving in and out okay. where you can't see around it. Okay. 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 And do you need a landscaping... Um, Plan, yes. Plan. You need to show us what you're going to use, what type of material, what plant, plants you're going to put in there so we'll know what's going in there. Okay. And when do we need to provide this? You need to bring it to the office. You know, you won't get a, an approved conditional use until we get that. If that, if that is what is approved here and the council sticks with it too. Okay. Patsy, is there someone on staff that she might be able to reach out to to help guide her on that? We do have a landscape architect on, on staff. So you, it's okay. Steve Hatfield. You might call Steve and and talk to me about what kind of materials might work better. Yeah. Okay. He can help you with the plan, putting it together. You said Steve Hatfield. 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 Mm -hmm. And was there questions on the screening? Well, they'll have to meet the screening requirements okay. of the type of fencing that it is. Yes. have to be an opaque fence, and there's listed in the ordinance what can and can't be used material-wise. They'll have to let us okay. know what material they're going to use. Any questions you have about that? Um, what exactly do you mean by, just by the screening? Like a fence? A fence, yeah. right. Okay, he has, to, he has to put a fence and he has to provide what type of material he would yes, use. Yes, and there is a list in the ordinance. When you talk to Steve, ask him to give you the materials that can be used for that fence too. Okay. And then as far as the paved area, that's the only area allowed as far as the parking of the vehicles. So in the rear of the building, uh -huh. um, where there is not paved parking, there cannot be cars put okay. back there. Okay. We had that discussion from the beginning. You can only put cars on paved surfaces. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Okay. Just okay. want to make sure you guys are clear about that because this is a conditional use and that could be grounds as far as dismissal of that. Okay. okay. I wouldn't want you guys to invest in this and then have that yeah. going down the road. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions Nothing. on this? I think, and then the only other one is the, um, the signage, like Patsy brought up, yeah. that that would have to... Um, be uh, approved by building inspection. Yeah, they'll have to okay. get a sign permit if you're going to change the sign. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Nothing else. No. Let's be a call for the vote. Call for the vote. Call for the vote by Mrs. Haney. Covert? Yes. Haney? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Powell? Yes. Compton? Yes. Additional use passes 6-0. And just work with the planning office. They'll help you through all of these on here, okay? Okay, okay. thank you. Appreciate it. Next section, public hearing rezoning. First item, rezoning R17-31, AMW Technology, LLC, 1906 Lowell Roads, from I-1 to C-2, presented by Luis Sosa. Yes, my name's Luis Sosa, 1906 Lowell Road. Actually... You said to C2, not C1. The agenda says one is from I. Okay, the I'm one on the on the table. on the table says C2. Okay, I was reading off of the yeah. Well, okay. it's, it's I1 right. to C2. Right. Yeah. Okay. And that what I. I don't know. I just okay. <laughs> I was making a note over here, and then I wanted to make sure it got. I wasn't All paying right. attention. Sorry. Trying to, I, I, I've shuffled this so many times today, I was out of order, so I was in a panic for a second. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about this? Well, I owned that property for probably four years, and uh, I paved the front parking, and uh, the last two years it's been empty. I haven't done anything, anything with it. 
I used to have a business. It was a machine shop, but I have another job in Fayetteville. So, you know, the last two years has just been sitting as a warehouse. Okay. Okay, and you paved in accordance to what you needed for paved parking for the warehouse for the bill of assurance that you got in 2014? Yes, ma'am. Okay, that was going to be one of my questions. And you realize that if you put in your, you're, at, you're also asking for conditional use for automotive sales at this location? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you can only park cars on paved surfaces, so right now you're going to be limited to just that area that's paved? Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. Now, in the future, I'd like to keep adding on. Okay. Well, let's talk about the zoning first, then we'll go to the, to the other part. The adopted comprehensive land use plan indicates light industrial warehouse use for this area. The rezoning request is in keeping with the following goals and policies of the comprehensive land use plan recommended for approval. Assure adequate land allocation for commercial areas of sufficient size and in proper locations and provide the viability of older commercial properties as well as new commercial developments. Years ago that we had an I-1 zone that would allow commercial activities in it and when we have re redesigned those districts over the years we took the commercial out activities out of the industrial so it's it's kind of a kind of a, a, a an area that's kind of transitioned over the years uh, and I think we probably need to con consider the conditional use at the same time yeah no, that's fine so I can go ahead and read that one for the record uh, we'll also considering C17-16 AMW technology LLC conditional use um, 1906 Low Roads, UC Unit 41, Automotive Sales, and C2. So, you want to talk about that yeah, before? Yeah. Okay. Any other comments on that one? Uh, the only question I still have is: Is there a sign out there, or do you intend to put a sign? You know, there was a sign in there, uh, but it was in the uh, office space up on top. There was a. That's where I had my uh, sign right there. Okay. Do you intend to put any other kind of sign on no, the property? No. Just okay. Just it in the building. It would just be on the building itself. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and do you propose any landscaping? Uh, no. Okay. Um, the general compatibility with the adjacent property is acceptable with the following conditions. No other business activity at this location other than automotive sales. Vehicle storage inside structure subject to the fire code requirements and the outside is restricted to the paved areas only and must meet any screening requirements. And if the structure is to be used for auto services, access and parking must be paved. Yes. Anything else? Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? To the commission? Will you be, if, if you're going to use this for an auto dealership, will you plan on fencing your area for security? Uh, yes, I was going to fence the back. Okay. And we have requirements for fencing, so we need to make sure you... Yes. Um, okay. Would you, would you be willing to consider some screening, some landscape, not screening, but landscaping? Sure. Across on the corners, you know, n nothing where it's going to be mm -hmm. hitting the line of sight, but similar to what we were discussing. With yeah, the we, we can, I can do that. That's, Since I don't it's going to be a conditional use. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem. Okay, you haven't proposed any, but you're saying you would be willing to do some landscaping. Yeah. Okay, then I need you to submit a landscaping plan so we know what you're going to do. Okay. Now, what additional areas do you intend to pay for auto sales right now? Well, the the parking lot. I was going to use the parking lot because um, I think Debbie said something. You guys want to let me know how many cars I can have there. I'm not looking to have maybe 10 cars at a time. You have to have parking for customers who come in. Uh -huh. So how many spaces do you have? I got that site 12, 12 spaces. Okay. Any other questions or comments? So you want to take these together or separate? We need to do them separate okay. because they're two different. Okay. <laughs> so call for the votes for rezoning. Call for the vote. Call for the vote by Mrs. Haney. Haney. Yes. Parker. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Powell. Yes. Compton. Yes. Covert. Yes. Rezoning passes 6-0 in the conditional use. Call for vote. Call for vote by Mr. Powell. Call 
Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Powell? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. Haney? Yes. Additional use passes 6 0. Staff will prepare the ordinance and the resolution to go to council, and it'll go next Tuesday evening because the council's only meeting once this month. Okay. Okay. So I'll come back uh, next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. And it starts at six <coughs> instead of. Uh, okay. Thank five. you. Thank you. Next rezoning R17-32 ISC properties 2200, 2300, 2400 South Old Missouri Road from I1 to C5, presented by Greg Edwards. I'm Greg Edwards. I'm with uh, ISC Properties, and we are asking for a rezoning of the property that's on the screen. Okay. Great. Staff comments? The adopted comprehensive land use plan indicates regional commercial use for this area. The rezoning request is in keeping with the following goals and policies of the comprehensive land use plan is recommended for approval. Improve the city's economic base and tax structure through the promotion of healthy, stable commercial concentrations, assure adequate land allocations for commercial areas of sufficient size and in proper locations and encourage the development of a wide range of commercial development for the residents and tourists to include neighborhood community and regional centers. So, so a quick question, I don't know if I can ask this on a rezoning like this. Um, with the existing structures that are there uh, from a sprinkling and a commercial, does that modify things based off of what it is industrial, moving that to a C5? I don't, I don't think unless they change the use or, you know, if, if it goes to an assembly use or something like that, the fire code kicks in. Uh, trades and services, which is the kind of things that they have in now, probably wouldn't kick any of that in. We went over the things that they have in the existing yes. buildings. They all fit in commercial buildings. And yes, ma'am. Yes, they all to, fit. Yeah, okay. Dwayne will have to talk about anything else. I don't think the zoning changes any of that. It's the use of the property, correct? Exactly. You can change the zoning anywhere in the city you want, but when we go in and do the business license or check the bill, and that's when they're going to have to bring whatever they change the bill into. Well, that, that's what I'm getting at as far as yeah. if it's changed to a C5, that if could potentially. If they do an assembly in there, they may have to put in a different type of alarm system. Okay. And it's based on whatever the use is after it's rezoned, not the rezoning itself that kicks it in. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that you knew what's the uh, yeah, we're aware of that. on that. Okay. Anything else? All right. Any questions or comments from the audience? Okay. Um, let's do the commission. Call for the vote. Call for the vote by Mrs. Haney. Parsley? Yes. Powell? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. Haney? Yes. Parker? Yes. Rezoning passes 6-0. Staff will prepare the ordinance that goes to council next Tuesday evening. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, R17-33, the Rock of Northwest Arkansas Incorporated, northwest corner of I-49 and Don Tyson Parkway, from P1 to C5, presented by Barry Williams of Crafton and Toll. Actually, I'm, I'm Bill Watkins. I'm an attorney in Rogers. You also have an authorization sheet for me to, to represent this matter before you. Uh, this is... 8.81 uh, acres at the northwest corner of I-49 and Don Tyson Parkway, as you can see. Uh, present zoning is P1. We're asking for C5. It fits in the character of the other uses that are in the area. Uh, it is in the ballpark overlay district, so my client understands that there are some additional regulations that might be imposed by the overlay district. Uh, this does conform to the land use plan, master street plan. I talked to Patsy about it last week. I, I think she told me staff supports it. You can see that by the report that's... Uh, in your packet, I presume, uh, and it, as she says in the report, it meets uh, and is in keeping with various goals and policies of the city. I'd be happy to address any questions you have about the project. Staff the zoning. The adopted comprehensive land use plan indicates regional commercial use for the area. Uh, the rezoning request is in keeping with the following goals and policies of the comprehensive land use plan is recommended for approval. Improve the city's economic base and tax structure through the promotion of healthy, stable commercial concentrations. Assure adequate land allocation for commercial areas of sufficient size and in proper locations. And encourage the development of a wide range of commercial development for the residents and tourists to include neighborhood, community, and regional centers. Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? Let's to the commission. 
Call for the vote. Call for the vote by Mr. Covert. Powell? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. Haney? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Thank you very Rezoning much. Rezoning passes 6-0. Thank you. Staff will prepare the ordinance that goes to council next Tuesday evening. 6 o'clock. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item, actually next section, public hearing conditional use. Uh, first one, C17-14, Wilbur Flores, 1132 West Sunset, use unit 41, automotive sales and a C2. Presented by Wilbur Flores. Hi, this is Wilbur Flores. Hi, Julio Garcia. Okay. Tell us what you want to do at this location. Well, I want to transfer my uh, car light. I'm, I'm on low right now, and I live in Springdale. My kids go to school in Springdale, so I want to put everything in here in this city, you know. Okay. okay. Uh, how much space do you see on this lot that would be available for putting a car lot? Um, basically, what we're trying to do is uh, on the back has a warehouse, and we're trying to expand it as an internet uh, car sales. And the people of, uh, of the city planning, they said uh, in order, if the customer wanted to pay for the car, we need to have the dealership over there with a full license. That's the reason that we mainly wanted to use this as an internet uh, warehouse sale, but uh, the city of uh, planning, they tell us that it needs to be as a dealership, the whole thing. And inside the warehouse, uh, have a full capacity of 14 cars. Uh, are there cars for sale on the lot now? No. Um, ingress and egress to this property is very congested because there's so many operations on the site. How many other businesses are located at this location? I think at least three. Um, yeah, what we're applying is uh, the front one is the one that it, it is shutting down. The dish in our place, it is shutting down that place. And that's the one that we're taking. Okay, off-street parking and loading areas are very limited. I don't know that there's enough space to put 14 cars and move them in and out at that location. The utilities are acceptable at this location. Um, screening and buffering, there's not any screening that I was aware of to the properties to the north. Uh, there is an existing sign, and I'm assuming you would use the existing sign and not add another sign? Yeah, the same one. Uh huh. Uh, the yard requirements are acceptable for, biz for commercial development. However, there are so many businesses on there, I don't know that all the yard requirements can be met. The size and shape makes it unacceptable. There's, there's no landscaping then proposed. Uh, my recommendation at this conditional use is unacceptable. The site contains three commercial uses with limited access, and uh, there's not any available areas for display of automobiles for sale. And inside the building, I'm not sure you can maneuver to put that many vehicles in there. Um, as I said, it, it was inside the, the warehouse. Well, they got to come in and out somehow. We do have two uh, comments that have been submitted, and I think each of you have those. One is from uh, the adjacent property owner next to it, uh, they, Shane Rose. Yes, they show, uh, he indicates that he's opposed to the condition used for the internet sales located at 1132 West Sunset Avenue. His concerns for this opposition are with children playing on the playground in a busy parking lot along with cars blocking entrances and blocking view of, of his existing and of exiting his place of business. I have many customers that are elderly and I'm concerned that one day someone is going to be hurt when they leave my place of business. With so many businesses located at this location, parking has become too crowded. You can see in the pictures below that illustrate my concerns, and he did pre present those. I do have another uh, one from Mike Lawson. He says, I am em emailing you about the public hearing on tonight's agenda. Uh, I have an interest somewhat other than being contacted by citizens. I also run a business about three doors down at 1244. I will be out of town tonight and unable to attend. My concern is that this piece of property is wanted is wanting an internet car lot. If you look at it already, it's multiple signs out front and not sure if it's suitable size for another business. I get the fact that they will imply internet, meaning that there will be no cars on this lot. However, there already has been and are being sold in my opinion. We as well as the shelter office next door to this site take great 
pride in the look of Springdale. I do not believe this site has the same concerns as most of us do as far as appearance, and I believe community engagement has had issues at this very address recently. Also, I'm asking is to take a very hard look at this, pl at this, please. Thank you for your time. I truly appreciate your service, and it's Mike Lawson who submitted that one. Misha, can you um, address any of the communication issues on this one? We um, did address some complaints that we had over on the property. There's some unsightly, unsanitary, um, a few things around the trash can. They took care of those things. There were some cars for sale that were parked out there. We did give them a violation notice back in October that uh, they needed to remove the unsightly, unsanitary, and get a business license for the vehicle sales or remove the vehicles altogether. So I believe that when, when our staff was there, um, the, the people in the front building um, said that the cars belonged to them. It was cars that they drove there. They were their personal cars and they were selling them. Um, but they were their personal vehicles. That's how they, they were allowed to have any for sale. Um, they couldn't prove that they were theirs and so we required that they remove them or apply for a business license. That's probably why they're here. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the audience? to the commission I, you know from what I see there's it's just there's just not an acceptable amount of space to do what you're wanting to do um, you know you, you state that you're going to be doing you're only going to have something done in a building and yet that's not what's happening right now and if you are having another location and you're going to have to spend your time here you're going to be back and forth with vehicles from the other location. Well, the thing is, uh, if I get approved on this side uh, on Spring Nails, I'm just going to close the other one up and I'm just going to be here. And the, um, like he said, the warehouse we have, like inside it'll be 14 cars, but uh, the front of the warehouse is like for another eight or nine vehicle is the one we was planning to use it. and whatever we uh we don't fit in there we just put it inside and that right. was our plan so so if somebody wants the very back car you're going to have to move 14 cars out to get it um th there's the four rows of cars so we we'll need to move three in the front yeah and just to take the, the one out yeah i i just you know i just think the space if you find a lot that has more space, that's and, just the wrong location for that type of business. Okay, and, and the other thing, uh, my car lot, wherever I'm at right now, I normally keep like between 8 to 12 cars at the most personal. And, and like I said, uh, that'll be, I, I look it up and I see the space, and maybe like four or five inside, and the rest of it will be outside. It don't be much. Uh, might to do to move it out so I have a question for the farmers Wayne have you looked at this building can they park 14 cars in that building seems like a lot of cars I have not been in that building I've been in the front building and the building to the uh, east but I've never been in that that warehouse did we do a conditional use out there? Did some of my personnel come out there and do a conditional use? Anybody from the fire department come to your building? Yes. They did? I apologize. Recently? Recently? Uh, probably like a year ago or two years ago. Okay, but they not to look at... To, to inspect everything. Oh, no, it wouldn't, have been, it wouldn't have been my office. It would have been the fireman no, 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 at a yeah, fire yeah, truck yeah, or, yeah, or company level. That was just a routine inspection. That yeah. wasn't to look at the idea of putting 14 oh, no, 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 cars no, no, in that no, no, building. No, no. I'm sorry. Right. I, yeah. I misunderstood. Okay. Any other questions or comments? I mean, for me, the concern is, is that the current property today, the fact that there has been violations, um, I mean, it's, it's really, in, in, in my eyes, and I can't speak on behalf of the commission on this one, I mean, really showing due diligence as far as a, a good corporate citizen in Springdale um, of maintaining the current property before as far as adding any additional uh, conditional use associated with that. So. 
uh, I mean, that's the concern for me. And um, as far as being able to grant this um, to be used going forward, but that's just my comments. I can't speak on behalf of the rest of the, the uh, planning commission on that. So this would be a call for the vote. Call for the vote. Call for vote by Mr. Covert. Compton? No. Covert? No. Haney? No. Parker? No. Parsley? No. Powell? No. The conditional use does not pass 6-0. You have the right to appeal the Planning Commission's decision. It has to be filed with the City Clerk within 15 days. Uh, you have to indicate why you think the Planning Commission's decision is an error and you have to notify all the adjacent property owners again. Thank you. And I would just make one more comment to you, uh, Mr. Flores. Springdale would love to be able to have the business in that one, but again, it's, it's about the property and maintaining the, the current property with the, the current businesses that are there as well. So, I mean, I think if, if there can be some due diligence as far as improvements made on that, um, you, you know, Ms. Haney brought up some other concerns too. Not sure if this is the most conducive property for that volume of, of type of product uh, to be in there. So, um, I just wanted that to be known out there. I mean, we, we do appreciate, I mean, that's a, the internet business is a very good one for automotive and, and that whole piece. Um, but it just doesn't seem like the, the proper location for it. All okay. Right. Thank Thanks. you. Next item, C1717, Stephen Perota and Mary Gillihan, parcel 815-308-56, tandem lot split in A1, presented by Stephen and Mary. Hi, my name is Steve Parada. So we bought a parcel of land from the uh, Johnson family. It's about 16 acres. We just wanted to split it so that we have six or seven acres and sell the rest to someone else interested in putting a house there. Staff comments? Uh, the requirement is that it have paved access to for a tandem lot. Uh, the access you have to the property now is on the south side, correct? Right. And it's not paved. Right. As a matter of fact, it's pretty rough. Yes. Okay. And then you would be required to pave that access easement all the way up to the second property that's being uh, created. And that would be your only access to that piece of property, correct? Right. Okay, so you're ready to do that? I mean, if we have to, we will. We didn't understand why we needed to because there are a lot of properties that aren't paved but i mean if that's the requirement then we'll, well comply that's a requirement and, and one of the things is so that and Dwayne's coming this way and i know what he's going to say <laughs> needs to be able to provide access for emergency services to that right now it's really hard to get to and then you're creating a lot to the north of that that's quite a bit further out so it the requirement would be that it would have to be paid okay. now i tell you that so that did you apply for a variance for that to <coughs> pave it I think we filled out the paperwork, but I don't think we submitted anything. Okay. So right now, the, the requirement would be if, if you are granted, if it's approved for a tandem lot split, and it goes to council and approve, you would have to pave it before you could actually file the split. Okay. Okay? Okay. The question is, do you want to move forward with that, with that, the, with that? Yes. Condition? Yeah, we're willing okay. to do that. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? No. All right. Any questions or comments from the audience? If you'll come up to the mic and state your name and address, please. I'm sorry. Do I need other things on there? I'm sorry. Any lots that serve by a single access that has more than two residentials or two utility buildings requires fire access um, to where it's less than the two. So that means that you might have to provide fire access complying with the Arkansas Fire Prevention Code 20 foot wide, and if it's over 150 feet, would require a turnaround. Thanks, Wayne. My name is Mary Hart. I live at 3911 Harper Lane. Uh, well, I've lived there for since 1986, so I've seen everything happen. This is my neighbor, Ron Harrison. He lives behind me at... 3993. If you can move up to the mic, I'm sorry. He's at... I live at 3993 Harper, Harper Lane. Lane. Her neighbor. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm Donna Johnson. I live on 4305 South 48th Street, so I'm just up the hill. Donna Johnson. Okay. okay. Yes. So we are neighbors and concerned parties that live adjacent to the potential. The uh, Harrisons have immediate border with this potential split. 
five acres. I just found out we are out of code, <laughs> apparently. There are four structures on Harper Lane. It is a dirt or gravel or Arkansas rock, however you want to put it, road. That original 20 acres was owned by Gene Harper. He split it back in 90, 80, 80, 90s, late 90s, I think. And if you look at your drawing, you will see that there's a little drive that goes up and there's some bare land up there. That happens to be my horse pasture. Next to that is a neighbor who is not here tonight. And next to at that, the ugly piece of ground that fronts to the west of the property that he is talking about buying is a red dirt pit that has never been properly reclaimed over the years. We've complained and complained. Okay. okay. You want me to address this before you get a little further? They're not asking for any access off of your drive. We Do you? We, we know, know that. that. Okay. We know All that. All their access will be from the south. We know where it up is. Up to that. Okay. Okay. My concern is, is you're going to have him pave all of that to suit your fire trucks. So where does that leave us who have lived on that hill for the last 30 years, who do not have a paved access for fire trucks? Well, if I remember correctly, Mr. Harper asked for a waiver not to pave it when he split it, and he was granted that waiver for it not to be paved. Okay. That's how that happened several many years ago. Right, it did. Yeah. But if you want to pave it, I'm sure nobody would complain, and I'm sure the fire department would love to have it paved, but we're not here to require you to have to pave yours either. Ms. Christie, we're uh, well aware of all this. It's not our first rodeo. Uh, the land that we're talking about, I have five acres on the north border <clears throat> that you see in the flat up there. That's my five acres. That's my house sitting in the middle of it. And I have a private easement to come up off of 48th Street to the first right turn, and that goes down in the woods to my house. Okay, when Mr. Harper sold that property to me, Mr. Mike Overton was the realtor that sold it, he told me then what you just said, that Mr. Harper had waived that, or got the council to waive right. paving it, but that land is not owned by us, it's owned by What's his name? Harper. Uh, uh, Mr. Harper passed away a number of years ago. It is now owned by the estate. Rudy Harper and his siblings owned, right. own all of it. That has not been subdivided. There's approximately seven acres up there and an acre that sits down on 48th Street that they own. Okay. Anyway, we have, we have a private drive, and it's marked at the bottom of the hill at 48th Street where the little house sits at the right. bottom of the hill. That's correct. It says private drive, invited guest only. So we don't have any traffic up there now. Uh, and um, Donna owns the driveway on the south end. Now, she owns the property at the south end of your border there, and her house sits at the top of the hill. And she has a private drive up to the top of the hill to her house. So there is no access. Now the big problem we have, Patsy, is in all these years when we've asked, and the chief, or assistant chief, I guess it was, met with us the other night out in the hall, and he apprised us that they were going to take a look at getting us a fire hydrant and a water line. If it's a requirement for the city, we're still sitting up there paying a huge amount of taxes, and we don't even have a fire hydrant. We don't have a city water line. But that's an issue that needs to be addressed with your property. That's really not an issue to allow them to have a, a tandem lot split if all their access is from the south. Okay, are you gonna bring water up there and give it to him? He will have to bring, we're not bringing water to well, it. He yeah, will have he to provide it. has to. to be code. Right. Okay, well then, you tell us what we have to do to get a fire hydrant up there with all these houses. We're more than a thousand feet away from the fire hydrant. Okay. It's I, down on 48. So the, 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 I, I, I don't want to get too deep in, in all of these things on here. I mean, because the what this is right here is just about the tandem lot split. But he said he plans on subdividing this. He's dividing it into two lots. There's three. No, his property will be divided to two lots. That existing track there will be 
two lots, one that he intends to keep on the south and one that he intends to, to, to sell off on the north. Only two lots with an axis that has to be extended from the lot on the south just to the edge of the lot on the north. He's not proposing to build anything on the north at this time. This is our first time to meet our new neighbor. Okay. So we're having to ask him questions, what are you going to do? Well, so we were unaware that there was even an idea to plant this to where they could sell more property than somebody else. Because that would give me a new neighbor, because he just told well, me. Mary going Ellen was going to do the same thing. And that's the discussion we had. And then she decided to sell the whole track. And they've come back to do a lot split. So. That's, that's the situation we're in. But they're, di they're dividing this one track into two tracks with one access off of 48th Street. And right now the requirement is they would have to pave it from 48th Street all the way up to where it gets to that second house at today's requirement. They didn't ask for a waiver as okay. Mr. Harper did. A question that this may not be the proper time to ask it, but that ugly scar to the south of us, what's the city planning to do with that? Well, Mining operations are, as we've talked about in the past, are controlled by the state, not by the city. And we have sent letters to the state asking them to take care of it. I haven't heard back from him in quite some time, and the mayor's shaking his head that he hasn't heard back from him many times yet. Well, over two years ago, the city inspector came out with me, walked over, and I showed him what we were contending yes. with. Yes. The last dirt that was mined out of that pit was when they built the street, 56th Street beside the pilot station on okay. the other side of the interstate. And I'm not gonna argue with it. Yes, that's what happened. We have been trying to go through the proper channels to get but, it done. And, and again, so I, don't, that, something we I don't, I, don't, I this, have a question. This right here, I, I, again, this isn't about that lot and, no. and that whole piece. We well, need to make sure it, it that conversation way, because have you been, the conversation because you been the, the, the what's on the agenda for this evening is a specific lot as far as for a tandem lot yeah. split here. I just yeah. want to make sure we guide the conversation appropriately to that. Okay. I mean, if there's concerns about the other property, that's fine. I mean, there's well, other it's there's other a, it's going there's to other a, venues to be able to to address those things, okay. but it is not something as far as for us here on the commission here tonight. Well, I also own the house at the very bottom of the hill on Harper Lane that fronts on that ugly piece of so the Mine only thing that, behind us. So the only thing that has been brought up from the planning <clears throat> department as far as that they need to make sure that they comply with because they so, did not ask for a waiver is the paving requirements in that whole piece. So at this point in time, the city has no objection to his plans to possibly subdivide the other 30 acres. I don't know how much he is planning on keeping for a personal residence. So there's about yeah, I need you to come to the mic if you're... If we're talking on this and I, again I just want to stay focused on this particular property and so it's about 16 give or take so we'd keep six or seven or whatever and, and sell the rest to someone else that wants to build a house up there the total track that you have is how many acres uh, 16 something uh, so almost keep, 16 15 keep something creating two tracks on 16 acres right that's all they're gonna do right right and they're not the subdividing pay. anything else right. Right. and okay. and he'll have to pave access to that location Correct. Okay, back to the water. Back to I, I, the water. There's nothing on the water that I can he address just said on that. that. That was city code. Okay, we will Not have to, to address lot. that with the gentleman who's doing the conditional use for the tandem lot because he has to provide utilities. He's not asking for a waiver of any of that. No, he I'm is saying. required to take it to his two lots. That's all he has to do right now. The water issue on your piece of property, we just need to get with Springdale Water and see what it takes to take care of that situation. We can't answer that question here tonight. Is that's a water department issue that will have to meet the code. Okay, what okay. department do we go to to try you to You need to go to Springdale Water Utilities to talk to them about if you're looking to get a fire hydrant or increase water capacity up to the top of the hill. You need to go address that issue with them. Thank you. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Donna. Hi. My name is Donna Johnson. I, um, my drive is the one you can see that goes up to their corner. So my house is there on the right. I, he's really answered my question. I wanted to know if they just had the one easement that was running alongside mine up to their place. If they um, have their home and stuff on that first part of the property and then sell the eight, seven or eight acres or whatever's left. Since my property does not touch that property north, will I get a notice if it's sold and then those people decide to subdivide it and make it a subdivision. a subdivision the only reason i'm concerned about that is because 
Um, right now, the ordinance only requires that they notify the adjacent property owner. So if okay. you're not an adjacent property owner, you won't get a notice okay. as of today. Well, they would have to rezone it in order to lay it out in order to get access okay. to it. So because my we'll entire side of sure. my property, the cars are going to be going to get to that property. It's going to be they're all going to be going right past the end of my property. And for me, it's going to be a tremendous effect. OK, right, right now, it's Kevin, just two houses. OK, and can that's, you discuss that's great for me. I the understand. Internet thing where she yeah, can go I was getting ready. Yes. I mean, you also, as far as notifications, um, you can go on to the uh, city website mm -hmm. and you can subscribe as far as to be notified okay. Okay. Um, online okay. for virtually any properties within mm -hmm. uh, the city. Okay. Um, I, I we always it. make sure that we encourage people to, to do those signups on that. But okay. as far as what Patsy was saying, as far as when we put a sign out there and any notifications, that is just for the adjacent properties that. Okay that touch the, the one in question in that whole But if there was a hearing like today, I could come and speak if I wanted to. Oh, yeah, absolutely. To. The hearings okay. are always open to the public, anyone who wants to okay. speak about any of the issues. Go ahead. I appreciate this it. Is zoned at this time? A1. A1, okay. Two acre minimum, so they would have to rezone it if they were putting anything in, uh, anything less than two acres. Thank you. Okay. You all have questions or comments as well? If you can state your name and address, sure. please. My name is Eddie Maples, and uh, my address is 4248 Terrace Street, and that is in the uh, Southwind Terrace subdivision, which is uh, just to the um, east of, of the property that you're uh, proposing there. And uh, my question about the paving of this uh, road, it, does, that, does that mean that they have to put a paved road the in from somewhere to that property? And, and you said it was from the south. I'm not Aaron, sure I understood. Can you show it. where the pavement would require? He'll he'll put put an arrow on that so that we can you can see where it's supposed to be. I mean, they'll they'll only have to pave it on that side. There won't be any roads that extends to your side of the of the property with with the conditional use for the tandem lot split only on That's the west side of the building. And planning on splitting it right in the yeah. middle right there. So one lot on one lot to the south, one lot to the north, and they just have to pave it up to that next, right. the north section. But they're going to split it right somewhat in half. But It's not it'll exactly go, in half, but it's a, it's two tracks that will run. It'll be a horizontal yes. split. But, but they have to pave all the way to the paved road, So the road, only part right? that he's going to... only... We're talking about them having to pay all the way from 48th Street because it's not access that's accessible for the fire department right now. So it's going to come all the way down past all the other houses on that. But not drive. on your, not on the Southwind Terrace. Oh, not side. on the Southwind side. side. And it will be in the access easement that's already been granted from 48th Street up to that first lot. So. Okay, but the, the two parcels will be right at the top of that south right at the top of that paved area because I mean and and so that will go right. over to Southwind Terrace subdivision the one parcel that he's wanting to build his property his home on that will not be subdivided to add any additional homes or anything right at now all he's at being this point. asked to create two lots and that's all okay. but and your question is in the future could he come back and yes request Normally, we don't approve <clears throat> double and triple and four or five tandem lots. If that was going to happen and they were going to subdivide it where they put more houses on it, there would have to be a public street that's built through there and get access to it. With uh, sidewalks and, 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 all, right. and appropriate, right. appropriate you know, locations that built to the city sewer. City sewer and everything. Okay. Any other questions? No. Okay. No, not at this time. Any other questions or comments from the audience? It's to the commission. Call for the vote. Call for vote by Mr. Powell. Okay, so that means if, if we approve this, they have to pave. Or they can get the lot split approved to be filed. The paving has to be done, or we have to have a bond for it. Or they will have to come back and ask for a waiver because we won't approve okay. it until that happens. And the paving is all the way to 48th Street. 
what we've discussed tonight because okay. the fire department does not have make access it to it. Very clear. Okay. okay. What, and and that's, I think it's a, actually a variance from the tandem lot requirements is what it would be, I think. Yes, that's yeah. true. I'm sorry, not a waiver. It's a variance. I'm sorry. Terminologies, we have to make sure we get the terminology correct. It would be a variance that would have to come in. And I can tell so, you by the look on Dwayne's face, he's not going to support a variance for it not to be paved. Well, and he probably has, I mean, depending on the length of this, it comes under additional I can't give a variance on state law. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Dwayne, I mean, you had mentioned as far as the length of that could potentially uh, require turnaround requirements <clears throat> as well. If you have a, a single drive, if you have more than, let's just be simple, two residentials on it, basically you have to, once you build the third one, you would have to bring on my end, a road up to at least the first one where there's not more than two on the dirt. And then every time you built a house, you'd have to bring up the road to that 20 foot wide. And then it would have wide. to have a hammerhead to turn around or something. A hammerhead, a modified. Uh, well, so 4305 would be one, and then this would be a second one. And as if it's. One that he's gonna build would be a second one. And if they okay. added a third one. If they had a third or a utility building, a large utility building, you know, that's. Then it would require turnaround requirements on that. Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure everybody's clear as far as and what's going on. Once you're over 150 feet, you require a turnaround. Okay. Once you're over 750 feet, you require 26 feet width of road. Okay. We are not sharing. Can you speak in the mic? I'm sorry. We are not sharing an easement. So does that make a difference? Well, he'll have to pave the easement that he has in existence from 48th Street to that tra that entire track because there's an easement just for that. Right. So if it was him and then the next lot that he's going to split off, that would be the second one. I shouldn't be in that count because I have my own driveway. Okay. Up. So we would actually have two access points there at one time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We need to check the legals on those easements to make sure we have that down. You have your own driveway from 48th? I yes. Do. The one it's, that's it's there, there now. Right now. It's been there okay. for years. Okay. And actually I have my plaid and it's got the easement numbers and okay. stuff on it. So okay. there's two. You have a, Aaron, do you know if we have a copy of that? If we don't, we may just need to scan it in so that we make sure we have one or we can pull it up from the county records okay. either way. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what we did when we were meeting with the applicants yeah. is they had a copy of a future one or a current one and then we looked up the rest through deeds and okay. stuff. So, yeah. so we should have that information on the file too. We'll go back and look at it again and make sure that we don't have a problem with those access easements. Good. I do have one other question and comment. Uh, do we know where a home would be placed on this property? So they're asking for a single. Or, they don't or is that have something to tell they us have to that say? today? They can put it any place that they can on, on that side itself. Okay, and I guess he's well aware of, of the water issues that come through there. And it. Or you, talked about it. Has I'll some talk, drainage issues. Yes, okay. we know. Okay, I'll I'll talk to you after. All right. We have a call for the vote by Mr. Powell. Covert? Yes. Haney? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Powell? Yes. Compton? Yes. The lot split passes 6 0. Staff will prepare the resolution. It goes to council next Tuesday evening. Thank you. Thank you. Next section preliminary plats, replats, and final plats. Uh, we have a preliminary plats 17 02. Parkway Plaza subdivision south of Don Tyson Parkway, east of 56th Street, and west of I-49, presented by ESI. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jason Apple with ESI. Um, we brought this forward uh, about a year ago uh, as a full preliminary plat. Um, currently, we just want to um, improve the east half or phase one of that development at this time. Um, so we're bringing it back um, to show those improvements and uh, ask for your approval. Staff comments? Uh, street names will need to be provided and approved prior for, to final plat acceptance. All comments from the utility companies and other city departments must be addressed prior to approval of construction plans. Uh, no comments for the preliminary plat. Comments stated 11 9 are to be reserved for the submission of the construction drawings for this uh, by this developer. Any problems? You, you know what all that nope. stuff is. Good. Okay. okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? It's to the commission. Motion to approve, subject to staff comments. Motion by Mrs. Haney. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Covert. Haney. Yes. 
Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Powell? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. Preliminary plat passes 6 0. Thank you. Next item, final plat 17 03, legendary subdivision phase 2, D, northwest corner of Kerry Smith and Miller Roads, presented by ESI. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Jason Apple with ESI. Uh, this is a final plat of the last phase of phase two legendary. Um, there's approximately 30, or there's 34 lots um, on this, in this phase, uh, asking for your approval. Staff comments? Are the street improvements on? What? I'm sorry? Are all the street improvements and the water and sewer in? Yes, we, we've actually had a final, uh, final section with city staff. Um, with some minor comments to address all pavings okay. done. Um, we're close. Uh, show the instrument numbers for offsite easements. All comments from the utility companies and other city departments must be addressed prior to approval. All terms of the attached list shall be satisfied prior to obtaining the planning director's signature on the final plat. You know, that standard list of bonding yes. and all that kind of stuff. Comply with the final plat requirement checklist. Uh, you need to add the note for roof and landscaping drain, drains and pipes of any size or type which carry water from any structure must be directed to public rights of way or drainage easements or to public drainage systems and may be directed to a neighboring and may not be directed to a neighboring property. Okay. Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? It's to the commission. Motion to approve subject to staff comments. Motion by Mrs. Haney. Second. Second by Mr. Powell. Parker. Yes. Parsley? Yes. Powell? <clears throat> yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. Haney? Yes. Final plat passes 6 0. Thank if you. you want this to go to council next week, we need the ordinance very quickly. Okay. Tomorrow? We'll put the packet together by Thursday at noon, so you need to submit to our office tomorrow if you can. Okay. No problem. Next section large scale developments L17 30, El Centro, Cristiana, Hispano, 1751 North 56th Street, concept of detention. Also, variance B17-65, variance for modification of commercial design standards, variance for modification of fencing requirement presented by James Layout Services. Hi, I am Kelly Hamblin, and um, I have been... Kelly, you're going to have to speak a little louder. Sorry. Okay. Is that better? Better. Okay. Um, I have been speaking with the adjacent property owners to the north and to the south of this property about the screening variants, and I am, have been told that they do not want a fence up, that they like a natural barrier between, and um, the, the gentleman on the south requested a... Um, a natural hedge, uh, an evergreen hedge. And um, Mrs. Allison to the north requested perhaps some ornamental trees or bushes. And she, was, she wants the spacing in between the plants for airflow. And um, as far as uh, screening on the um, east side, the drainage of this property, it flows naturally from west to east. And if we put a fence on that east side, it is going to obstruct the drainage and cause some really bad problems for this property. So we're requesting um, the, the variance for screening as I just described, which is a little bit different than um, what was actually submitted on the application. But we do have both of those property owners that this would affect here. So um, uh, are there any other questions for me? Staff comments? I need state plan coordinates for all fire hydrant locations. All comments for utility companies and other city departments must be addressed prior to approval constructions plans, a screening fence is required in accordance with chapter 56. Show trees associated with the screen, need to show spot elevations at the drives to prove that there is a high spot so that water does not drain to the street. Uh, provide a stormwater pollution prevention plan. Uh, the concept of detention must be uh, approved by a planning commission and easement 
shall be provided in plans for detention facilities. A minimum 25 foot wide drainage easement shall be provided around the 100 year flood pool connecting the tributary pipes and the discharge system along the most passable routing of piping systems. Ownership of the detention facility will remain with the land. A copy of the filed easement will need to be sent to us before approval. The other items that were on the ones that you got sent to have all been addressed. So. Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? In your uh, request for the variance for modification of the commercial design standards, you're asking for it to be as submitted in the uh, plan documents itself? Yes, ma'am. Um, the only thing that I think somehow got lost in, um, in the transition of files here is there was the intention of putting a two-foot um, landscape strip along the sides of the buildings uh, on the on both the um, north and south side and the landscaping is shown there in the elevations but it it did get missed on the plans and we will add that in okay. Okay. and then the height of the canopy the fire department would address that and we're okay with that for trucks and width to go through Wayne's outside Erin, are, are you, I know we had that concern before, I assume all that got addressed. I believe that the architect has a, addressed everything and I thought he was here. Yes. <laughs> What's the question? <laughs> the, Busy night for you, Dwayne. Uh, the canopy, I know there was a question with the height and the width. I'm assuming that we've got that taken care of. Uh, 13 foot, six inches, 20 foot wide, clear path that they're gonna use that as a turnaround. So it's Kelly, you get 14. it's 14, 14, five, I think. I think, so. I think yes. the height was the issue as much as the width. 14, seven, right? 14, seven. I couldn't remember. Then how wide is it? Uh, drive through. It, it's. Uh, you can come up to the mic. Yes, it is. I believe 28 feet okay, right so that, there. That should be yeah. fine. I gave her I, when we talked. We gave her the option. She could either make hammerhead turnarounds and make them work, or she can make a drive through as long as okay. she met the code. Okay. I'm sorry, let me correct that. It's uh, 26 feet wide with 28 foot radii. Yeah, it's okay. clear, it's clear right. okay. as long as it's 20 foot clear. Okay. okay. Right. Thanks, Dwayne. Uh, did you have anything else? I'm uh, no, sorry. I'm sorry. That, I okay. have all, that's all my comments, sorry. <laughs> all right, I thought you were done. <laughs> no, I'm done. All right, so we have some comments? Yes. You can state your name and address, please, for the. <clears throat> I'm Alan Bearden. This is my wife, Martha. We live. Uh, you pull the, the mic up just a little bit. Sorry about that. We have the property to the south, the 10 acres, and this kind of snuck up on us, so we're a little unprepared. But uh, the house we're in is just right south of where the new proposed building is going to be. So we'll literally be looking out the, the kitchen window at that new building. So the concerns we had were, uh, we're not sure how high the building, the new the building is gonna be, uh, how many stories it's gonna be. Um, and, and we were talking to Kelly earlier, she said about the, the barrier between them and, and our property. And uh, I guess it's kind of hard to understand what would be a reasonable barrier if you don't know how high the buildings are going to be so really that's that's the two concerns we have is just understanding how high the buildings are going to be and and uh, what kind of privacy barrier there would be kelly the the building is a single story kelly it's a single story building and how tall is the peak on the it, it is actually you need to, two story oh it's two story okay yes it is so is, is that the same as the church is it two or is it three? I'm certain that it isn't three, okay. but I'm not sure that it isn't okay. if it's two. And the requirement for screening between properties is an eight-foot fence. So there, there, there's no distinction between residential well, and commercial. It's, well, this is not barriers. commercial. This is a P1 zone, which is an institutional for a church. Okay. And uh, it's set back. What's the distance from the side property lines to the edge of the building? Kelly, do you know? Um, well, we've got two 19-foot parking spaces and a 26-foot 
I, I don't know that number off the top of my head. 66 at least there more or less and then whatever the space is it's 10 foot between that the edge of the parking lot and the it's around. it's over 10 feet between the edge of the parking lot and the property line there um, well it's 10 feet on one side and 12 feet on the other okay thank you thank you is there any other questions or comments Hi, I'm Brenda Allison, and I live on the north side at 1823 North 56th Street. And I, about the fencing, I just want to have it more natural. I don't want it to be an industrial-looking fence. And I like to have the airflow. I like it to look natural. It's in the country. And so if we can keep it that way, I'd much rather have it that. So... Kelly, we would need you to submit a revised screening if you're going to propose to use an alternate besides what you show on the okay. on the plan now. If, if you want to meet with them and see if you can work something out, we would need you to. Is that something that we can uh, vote on tonight? Well, we or have, We have to decide if we're willing to do that first, okay. and then if we can, yes, we'll, we'll okay. work that out. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the audience? Okay, it's to the commission. Who? Oh. So we, we don't want a fence on the north side, but we want a fence on the south side? No, I don't think you, you don't want a fence, we, we correct? We actually have a fence on the south side. Yeah, if you can side. come to the mic and, and talk. We currently have a fence on the south side. On your property? Mm hmm Yeah, between the two properties. But it's not really a privacy fence. It's just uh, one is a chain link fence for part of the part of the length, and then there's a barbed wire fence because we have right. some cattle there. But on, on, okay. Would you prefer to have a natural barrier added with what the fencing yes. is there with some kind of a hedge? That's what Kelly indicated. Yes, okay. yes. So the, the south side would have a hedge I or mean, something on there and then the north side we're proposing that would have some kind of uh, ornamental trees or something that would create more of an open space between those and if that's acceptable to the to the planning commission then kelly would have to come in with a revised plan to show how that's going to work and an ornamental broken screen i kind of thought might be a, a good way to visualize it and those ornamental trees are you looking for more evergreen or are you looking for um mrs allison indicated more of an interest in um like maybe flowering trees she had mentioned a crimson king or dogwood or even some um some flowering shrubs um those were some of the things that she mentioned okay <clears throat> I, have a I have a question uh would uh would you set the highest limit to a natural barrier is it the same as a as a fence uh i think the canopy is at 20 feet 20 feet I don't know. I have to look. I'm, I'm looking at Aaron back there to, to see if that's the case because when I quote things out of the top of my what, head, what was sometimes the that's good or not. The, 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 the can, canopy height for the a natural canopy height for a natural. Mm -hmm. I mean, we for perennial landscaping, we can do anything for berming or just. I mean, if you have large trees there that are hardwoods, they're going to grow to you know respectful height if it's good soil, and you're not going to have as much of a screening. But but would those would those be come into a they could only go to a maximum height i think is what your question is on that well right think we said right maximum. now between the two properties there is the power lines that go across and so it can only reach a certain height right but, they, they will, so that, yeah. but even if you put some type of tree in that does not reach that height with with a barrier where you don't see the parking lots would be great because <laughs> We're going to be looking out the window at uh, at the building, so it would be nice to have some height there, like a tree, but it didn't have to be a straight, very really high one. So it may be best for Kelly to work with them yep. separately to look okay. at where they want to place the that screening burn. along the side of the property that gives them the, the the most adequate screening at the point they're looking for it at, and, and then bring that back. That's that's correct. That probably be best because there is an easement I think that runs there. Is that right, Kelly? And so it would 
the utilities company is probably going to have a problem if we stuck something in proximity to that without yes, working sir. on it. Um, the, yes, there is utilities. That was actually why I kind of shied away from the berming was because I didn't want to have to raise any of the manholes or anything like that. Right. Um, trees, I, I know that the utility companies are not, um, they never really like trees, but nonetheless, we have to plant them in utility easements all the time. And um, I uh, was under the, I, I was, the, the tree that I actually had discussed with Mr. Pruden was an ar arborative, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but um, if I recall right, it does not get incredibly high, but averages maybe about 10, 12 feet. I think the, the most important thing is, is that we understood as far as, you're, you're wanting some screening that covers as far as, so that you're not looking at the parking lot all the time. As far as what's re what that is to get to that type of requirements, um, I think what you're hearing from here is that it's acceptable to work that out. Um, For an opaque natural screen. Right. Okay. So an opaque natural screen along the south side and a broken ornamental screen on the north side? That's, that's what's being proposed. On Taking okay. into account their viewpoint from where they're looking out there. Yes, window. sir. Okay. Okay. Brian, did you have a... Any? Oh, and, and no screening on the part where it would impede the drainage, right? Right. right. Okay. And so that's what you're modifying your fencing variance to include? Yes, ma'am. It is 20 feet, by the way. I did find it. I, I was thinking that it was, but it's oh, been a I while did. since I've looked that up. Always better to check <laughs> than to assume. All right. Any other questions or comments from the commission? Um, so in the, in the commercial design standard change is what? Okay, she's Separate asking comment. for it to be approved as was submitted in your packet. What it looks, and it's very similar to the existing building, correct? Yes, ma'am. That's what it's going to look like, and it's pretty similar to what's already there. <clears throat> okay. So we have a couple of uh, call for the votes. We've got the uh, variances. Um, Call for the votes, and then we have concept of detention. Call for the vote. Can we do them together? Do the variances together on that one. Okay. So we have a call for vote call by for Mr. Covert. Yes, sir. On both variances together? On the variances. Both yeah. variances together, yes. Parsley? Yes. Powell? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. Haney? Yes. Parker? Yes. Variance has passed 6 0. And then I need a call for the vote for concept of detention. Call for the vote. Call for the vote by Mr. Powell. Uh, Parsley? Yes. Powell? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. Haney? Yes. Parker? Yes. Concept of detention passes 6 0. Motion to approve large scale subject staff comment. Motion by Mr. Powell. Second. Second by Mrs. Haney. Compton. Yes. Covert. Yes. Haney. Yes. Parker. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Powell. Yes. Large scale passes 6 0. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <clears throat> Next item large scale 17 34, Sam's Furniture 2. Hidden Creek Lane, Lot 1 of Business Park and Brush, or at Brush Creek, uh, Parcel 815-29801-375, Concept of Detention, presented by Craft and Toll. How are y'all? My name is Joe Pfeiffer. I'm uh, with Craft and Toll. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Matthias Properties to represent this Sam's Furniture large-scale project. Uh, it's basically a 50,000 square foot It'll be 20,000 retail, 30,000 storage. Uh, the sister store to the existing Sam's Furniture uh, store that's out there right now. There's, uh, we've submitted a, a few architectural variances with the project uh, upon resubmittal. And uh, we've got our architect here with us if, if you guys want to discuss any of those. Okay, staff comments? Uh, those variances requests didn't get filed in time to, to do the publication notice, so we can't really hear the variances tonight. Okay. Okay. Um, 
A screening fence is required in accordance with Chapter 56, show trees associated with the screen. All comments from utility companies and other city departments must be addressed prior to approval. Construction plans, the development must comply with the City of Sprino commercial design standards or variances required. Front side and rear elevations lighting plan and a written response to design standard comments are required. In all residential, commercial, and industrial developments submitted after August of 20, 2007, all utility lines, cables, etc., must be uh, placed underground. Uh, the internal passage walkways must be distinguishable from driving surfaces through the use of low maintenance surface materials such as pavers, bricks, or scored concrete. And I believe you show those as painted. Uh, provide at least two of the items listed under the central feature in, in community spaces in the Springdale no Commercial Design Standards. Did you propose any? Ma'am, I'm sorry. Repeat any, that, please. Uh, Central features or community spaces, were any of those proposed? Uh, Nick? Yeah, all, all that will be addressed uh, okay. in the building design. Okay. Provide an area to accommodate a possible future public transit stop. Uh, the slides and all the things that you provided, uh, that your variance covers are ones that and I can read through all those. We'll go back to those in a minute. Need a uh, detailed drawings of the enclosures and screening methods. Trash containers, trash compactors, and recycling bins shall be screened from public view on all four sides with a solid fence wall or grass constructed of cedar, redwood, masonry, or other compatible building materials and shall be appropriately landscaped. How do you propose to uh, enclose the trash? Uh, again, all that will be addressed in the building design. Okay. Exterior ground mounted or building mounted equipment, including but not limited to mechanical equipment, utilities and barks, banks of meters shall be screened for public view. Uh, we got several things that you're still going to address, is what it sounds like. Um, commercial, a commercial development includes a fence or wall. The following guidelines and standards apply maximum height of eight feet, constructed of high quality materials, maximum length of continuous unbroken is 50 feet. Uh, Sign design materials and, and placement should be co complement the overall architectural design of the building. Are you proposing an additional sign or it will be on the same one that's already there? It'll be an additional sign. Okay, and you'll send that with the other stuff? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah. Uh, chapter 107, stormwater uh, discharges. The site disturbance is greater than a half acre grading permit application and SWIP delineating all anticipated disturbed areas of plan of these areas to achieve final stabilization. All of that has to be submitted with current BMPs. Uh, the, co the concept of detention I don't think is needed on this one because you're draining this to the existing detention pond that was designed as part of the subdivision. So we don't need to do a separate uh, concept of detention. Yes, My concern is we have a lot of issues that were not addressed with the plan that we have or with the variance. And so we're kind of uh, looking to approve uh, something that <coughs> may not have everything addressed. <coughs> Submit a lighting plan. Yes, ma'am. Okay, we got we got a lighting. Plan. We got the photo metric in this week. <clears throat> okay, we got that. Okay. Anything else? Any questions or comments from the audience to the commission? You know, there's there's an awful lot of um, things that are going to require variances. Um, if if you're wanting to continue hear this tonight and not table it to put it together with the whole plan, one of the things I'd like to see addressed is some of these variances are, look to me that they're outside of what the norm mm -hmm. is. And, and what I look for is how are you trying, you know, a variance to me is you're trying to do something different but still comply in some way with our ordinance. So if it's landscaping variance, you're you're going to put the same amount of trees, but maybe in a different spot, and the same thing with your siding and with your um, building. Ben could, uh, Nick could probably elaborate a little more, but most of our variances were uh, to get the the building to be basically like the uh, exi the existing Sam's furniture. The facades are going to match uh, materials. I'm Nick Pierce with Nielsen Architecture. And that was really the gist of our variance was going to be, we're trying to match kind of the development that was already there. It is part of the larger Sam's Club 
development or the Sam's Furniture development. So we weren't going to stray too far from what was already done. I know they had applied for some variances that we aren't typically familiar with. It wasn't us who okay. did the first building. So we were going to try to make it match as closely as possible, make it a little bit more traditional. Um, <laughs> I think the owner wasn't quite as happy with the original building. So we wanted to make a few changes to it, but still make it a affordable structure for something this size. Okay. And, and yeah, I mean, cost isn't so much the issue from our standpoint as that it's following the intent of the, and I think we made some changes on the other one that I wouldn't necessarily guarantee Support. you that I will do on this one. So I'm just telling you to keep that in mind when you bring the others forward. And if, if, there's, if you decide. If you, know, you would be ahead. willing to work with us, we can probably try to resolve some of that stuff before coming into the next meeting. But what you need to do is submit elevations with the predominant materials and what you're going to use so we know what's going to, whatever changes you're using, whatever kind of materials they are, we don't have any of that kind of stuff. There's an awful lot of metal and not very much. That we're looking at tonight, it all came in late these elevations okay. and are these are the directions on these elevations right as far as that bottom one says the west on what i'm looking at says west elevation it looks like those are flipped <laughs> that should be east right yeah because it should face east correct yeah, i don't main entrance will be i don't east. know if this was just put together rapidly just you know just learn getting the piece i don't know um but i would tell you just for my own and i can only speak for myself but um, I, I would like to see a lot more detail on what we're what we're being asked to vote on other than it'll be addressed in the final product because that if that's the case then we're just going to approve something that we have no idea what's going to be put forward ideally these okay. elevations that are submitted I don't know how long you guys have had to look at these but this yeah. would be the yeah. intent but it, of our but it's design. beyond just the elevations I mean we, we can't even hear as far as all the different variances that you have as far as to uh, and you will have a variance as far as design standards, and we will need to understand those. So, I mean, what you're hearing from the group here is it's a bit difficult for us to be able to approve a large scale and then have that go beyond us and, and, um, and then be um, reviewed by the city council. And I suspect, well, you have your, okay. Then go council. It, it would be staff review, and we would right. have to bring it yeah. back to you if there's something we weren't comfortable with. So, you do run my, my question to you guys is is what's what's the benefit as far as pushing this through right now um, versus tabling this and then coming back as far as the whole piece including the variances if I can just address that I'm Tom Hanley with craft and toll um, I, I don't even know whether there's an opportunity to do this but we'd like to at least ask uh, whether there's a possibility of approving the large scale uh, this evening uh, subject to any variances that may or may not be approved obviously as the variances aren't approved the building will be redesigned so that it's brought into compliance with the code uh, but that would allow us to move forward uh, with the site work with the utility uh, plan approval and that sort of thing the the variances that are being requested are not going to significantly affect or affect at all the footprint of the building or the parking or anything site related but if we hear this tonight versus next month what's what is going to slow down the process as far as all the uh, additional that you're working on i guess that's my question uh, other than it being a month's worth of design that we could that we could get done and get approved and begin site construction there's a tremendous amount of earthwork that needs to be done it would it would allow them to get to get the ball rolling and and then be able to it, it's not going to affect any of the building uh because there's so much site work and utility work that needs to be yeah. done well, and bringing the water we, line we in from that. 48th we, street yeah, we do respect that we're not trying to hold that up at all the opportunity is in the month it took to prepare this it's prepared with inadequate instruction it's in prepared with the variance information not being available for us to make a decision on and yet we're supposed to send that forward to our council who is then going to turn around and say the planning commission approved this based on what Technically, it doesn't go to council. This, once you make the decision tonight, they have to have all of their pieces together before they can get a grading permit. Normally, when we approve a large-scale development plan, that means it's ready to go with elevations and everything else. Right. And basically, what you're asking for us is to approve a phased development plan so that you can get a grading permit is what you're asking and, for, and, and one of the pieces that was a, a big challenge on the on the on the uh, previous property um, was the fire access and there was a, a lot of changes as far as on, on the outside perimeter of the building if i remember correctly yeah we've got we've got complete fire access all the way around this building okay but it was i think we had to go through a couple of 
rounds of that, if I remember and I correctly. I think we have that all addressed this time. Is Dwayne still back there? Yes. I mean, there's not any issues as far as the building site itself and the access for fire code, is there? <clears throat> um, no, except for when we started this, um, it was going to be a city street and then it become a private road. The road is not fire laned like it should be, and I think it's less than 32 feet all the way to um, 48th Street. Now, as far as the, this particular building itself, um, everybody involved, had, we'd consulted with each other prior to submitting plans. Um, there was a few things about hydrant locations and things like that and, and water supply. Um, the original Sam's Club eats up with its pump and its sprinkler system. There's only 13 gallons per minute extra water remaining. Sam's Furniture though, you mean Sam, not Sam's Club, this is Sam's Furniture. Sam's Furniture, okay. the original Sam's Furniture okay. building. But um, they've uh, come up with a plan to loop the system so we're even going to have water that may decline in years to come. We'll have it for the new Sam's Club, or the, sorry, the original Sam's Furniture. Sam's Furniture store over there. So in essence, you're saying they've addressed all those issues as far as fire access and fire flow flows. Flows, even for the existing building, I think it's going to help because they're, they're planning on looping the system now, <coughs> which will will take care of if the water declines any uh, for the Sam's uh, Furniture building there it's there now. I mean, the Planning Commission's decision, are you comfortable with moving this forward so that we can attempt to get it ready to get a, permit, a grading permit without knowing exactly what the building itself is going to look like? All those details aren't worked out. That's the question you'll have to address. So they'll have to come back? Yes, they have to come back to get any variances or their plan has to be designed to meet all of the design standards as they are today. Me personally, I'm, I'm okay with that's fine. Um, I just wanted to make a clarification. One of the engineers, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit <laughs> under the weather, had um, mentioned approval subject to any variances that are not, you know, that have not come before the body. That's not what they can approve. They can approve subject to staff comments with the assumption that everything is going to be as presented and any variance is a later issue. Does that make sense? It's technically you can't get approved set of plans unless all that has been addressed. So if we approve it tonight, you still got to come back next time if you want to change it. I was going to say that I personally, I'm okay with um, moving it forward as because it sounds like they're under the understanding that you potentially could lose a lot more than one month's worth of design work when you bring this back and it risks not getting approved. And I know that that's the facade and stuff, so that's going to be not a priority right now, but if you bring it back like that, it's going to risk not getting approved, and then you've got to wait another month before we see it again. So I mean, as long as as long as everybody understands, I'm, I, I'm fine with moving it forward. And, and we're not no, we're no, not trying to make y'all's no. I mean, I understand, decision but difficult. in the past, when there's that many issues, there have right. been several instances where we have just tabled it because there's not enough information for us to make those decisions. Sure, so, and, I, and I completely understand so, that. The, I guess our, our request really is centered around the fact that there's 1,300 feet of water line that we're gonna have to design and bring in to get the fire flow up to what it needs to be because currently it's at a marginal level. Uh, and, and with that kind of capital investment by Matthias Properties into that, they're, they're obviously gonna to bring the building into compliance if, if variances aren't, aren't approved. It, but I completely understand your position as well. So, right. Because so the question is, do you want the large scale to be voted on tonight, or do you want to request it to be tabled? Because if it's voted on tonight, you have to meet all of the the commercial design standards to get approved large scale. As Sarah said it's either we approve it, subject to staff comments, which means those things have to be addressed, yeah. or you have to wait until you get a variance before we can approve it. So basically it's whichever you want to do. Well, the footprint's not going to change. Okay. Footprint's the footprint. I said the footprint's not going to change. So utilities, size of the bit, foot foundation of the building, parking lot, parking, that's not changing. The variances are everything above ground. Well, and just for the, uh, I don't know if the commission's fully aware, but uh, in the review process, once the planning commission approves this, it's still subject to staff review until all comments are addressed for the city. So 
you will not be able to pull a permit even if you had large scale approval uh, until we got to a point where everything we felt from the city staff and our ordinance was met unless there was a variance deviate from that. That was my comment. You can't get it approved large scale unless you bring us a set of plans that meets all the design standards between now and next month. Okay. Sure, and that's that's fine. We're we're fairly confident that the client's going to want to probably pursue the variances, um, and and so that would probably be the best course is for us just to bring this whole thing back through rather than to put you guys in a position where you're trying to approve a partial plan. So are you requesting this be tabled till next month? I guess that's what I'm saying, Good. Patsy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you all. <clears throat> All right, so next to large scale, 17 35, Artisan Flooring, 137 East County Road, uh, Line Roads, Concept of Detention presented by Steadfast Engineering. Good evening, my name is Randy Ritchie, I'm with Steadfast. And you want to tell us a little bit more about your, your property here? Oh, I can do that. Uh, the property is five acres pretty much on the nose and the developer is intending to build four buildings. The four buildings will be built phased, not all at one time. They want to begin the first building, the furthest west building. They want to begin immediately and that will become their Artisan Floors carpet uh, warehouse, which that is a company that is in business in Springdale now. They are happen to be leasing a building on just off of North Thompson and they want to move to this facility is, would be larger and would better facilitate their operations. The other buildings would be built out as they find tenants to occupy them. So they won't be doing all four buildings at once. They'll be doing the first one immediately and the second one, well, the rest of them hopefully soon after, but as, that, as the tenant availability comes. Uh, we are extending this private road. It's not a, it's currently a private street. Uh, we're going to extend it. We got the fire truck turnaround at the end, the cul-de-sac at the end, and we're also providing a permanently striped fire hammerhead in the middle of that uh, because of the length between those. Uh, we have the detention. I, you guys will be voting on the concept of detention. Uh, we have landscape plan. I think we need a little bit more work on the landscape plan per the comments that I saw today. Uh, but otherwise, uh, fairly straightforward project uh, all the utilities are available um, there you have it okay staff comments uh, did you provide a written response to all the comments if I didn't that was a mistake on my part because I made them still a comment we don't have your written oh, response okay okay state plan coordinates for all fire hydrant locations, so the location of the handicapped parking signs, need details of the handicapped ramps, truncated dumps are required as per ADA requirements, the front landscaping is required, perimeter landscaping is required, need a landscape plan, and automatic irrigation system shall be required for all landscaped areas. Uh, have a two year guarantee for landscaping, show all existing easements, show the size and location of freestanding signs. All comments from utility companies and other city departments must be addressed prior to approval of construction plans. In our residential, commercial, and industrial developments, uh, after August of 2007, all utility lines, cables must be underground. Um, <coughs> comments, a land survey or seal and certificate of authorization must be provided on the plans. Elaborate on M and R with meets and bounds if M is measured and R is record. Please note that a property line adjustment cannot be included in large scale property. The property line is a large scale development must match the legal description of the warranty deed. Have you addressed that? Yes. Well, uh, a, hand, a majority of these actually are on the drawings. I think I just need to meet with staff and we can go through, but uh, none of the, we don't have any issue with any of those any of these comments. Okay, we need a grading and drainage plan we need, uh, the, for showing each lot how it drains to the street right away, a dedicated drainage easement with improvements on existing drainage way with, uh, without flowing across the neighboring lot, no drainage from roof drains, landscaping or runoff may be directed or diverted onto neighboring properties. Label the materials for the proposed parking lots and driveways. Show a detail of the HCAP ramps at uh, handicap ramps at sidewalks. 
uh, need a uh, grading permit even though the site disturbance is the site disturbance is greater than a half acre a grading permit and a SWIP is required uh, concept of detention must be approved uh, an easement shall be provided in plans for detention facilities a minimum 20-foot ride drainage shall be provided around the 100-year flood pool there's some significant things that may or may not be have been addressed on this list too is that it okay any questions or comments from the audience it's to the commission Are we looking at similar as the other one? Is there too many? There's a lot of items of, that we, you know, and we and haven't and even gotten an answer on, right? Any that relate to the? Did you say commercial design standards in there? I don't think this project. I don't think commercial design is standards this apply is to this project. Area, correct? It's I one. Yeah, so it doesn't have commercial design standards. Oh, I've got a list here. Sorry. <clears throat> Any other questions, comments? Again, you would not get an approved large scale development plan that you can get a grading permit until all these things have been addressed. Now, I would like to say that um, there is a large list of items here, but I can. I mean, I can come in tomorrow morning and review the plans with Aaron and a lot of these items I, I think are on the plans. I think maybe because I did because of the written responses, maybe didn't get picked up. But. Usually we look for a written response that says this has been noted on the plan and you go sure. look at the plan and see that it's been done. When we don't have that, that puts us in a bad position. It's not our job to do quality <coughs> control for development proposals as a community. I mean, my recommendation is this one be tabled as well. It's the next month, but it's not. And, and I apologize. I, I didn't realize that the written responses weren't there. I, I thought they were on the disk, but that would have been my mistake. So are you good with tabling this till next month? Well, I don't know if I have a choice. <laughs> the, uh, the owner's here. If you can state your name, please. Um, Eric Tabor, Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I'm with Artisan Flooring and Developer. Um, our timetable is such that it, it's very tight. And tabling, it means 30 days. Mm -hmm. And uh, as she stated, that uh, this uh, grading permit is contingent on us finishing all this. I'm, I'm very comfortable with, we can't commence until we have a grading permit and we intend to comply with everything um, I, I see no issues with anything y'all have requested I, to me I see the difference between this one and the last one was that I knew that the developer was going to want those variances because of the size of 50,000 square foot building and so to go from what they presented to comply with commercial design standards is a lot of money and so it was not, it wasn't, to me, I didn't feel like it was as tough a position for us as it was gonna be for the uh, architects if they committed to complying with commercial design standards. So that's where I see the difference between this one and that one in that there's some landscaping, but other than that, I mean, it sounds like most of the stuff he could knock out maybe tomorrow or the day after <clears throat> working with Aaron or whatever and and what the last one presented they weren't planning on changing any of that so they weren't planning on complying with if that makes sense to anybody but they weren't planning on getting up to commercial design standards it sounds like they're committed to getting to this list of 15 16 things planning on complying with all that so that's my two cents my only concern is if they plan to, it should have been addressed by now. I'm, I'm sorry. What? If you intended to, it should have been addressed by now.
Yeah, I, I would uh, I would agree with Patsy. I, I don't. Once again, I don't I don't want it to be misinterpreted that by tabling these, we're trying to slow down the progress. But we're here once a month to hear and to see the opportunities brought before us, and unfortunately, just cannot make a sound judgment call when the information isn't provided. Um, I certainly understand what Peyton's saying. I think they are two different things. The only thing for my two cents um, is that I think we need to be consistent. Uh, and I don't think we want to change the rules every time for every different one based on what we believe may or may not be uh, the things that they're trying to achieve. So just for me, and I'm only speaking for me, uh, if the information is not adequate to make the decision on what we're being asked to review, I don't believe we can make that decision properly. But we have before proved large scales here when all of the issues haven't necessarily been addressed when they've said we will is that correct or am I misspeaking? Yeah. We have done that this before. This one is very close to have not made it anyway. If there had been a couple more comments, they wouldn't have made it right, anyway. Right, right. Yeah, I agree with you, Peyton. I think we have done that in the past, but it may have been for one to maybe three or four right, things, right. not I, the list we're looking at on this. That's, that's I, just my take. Yeah, and I would say several years ago, we probably would have let something like that go, and we started having problems with what happened a month down the road, and because of that, Having been on the commission for a long time, we started kind of curtailing and really paying attention to that, just like we're asking for the elevations and things like that. I think, the, I think the difference that you're bringing up is, is that we're not anticipating a bunch of variances in this at all. Is that kind of what you're stating, is that they, they will comply with all of these things in here? I think that, yeah, what I'm trying to, yeah, what I'm trying to say is I think they understand what we're what we're saying right now is we're approving it to get all this stuff up and i'm not say, yes they should have had it then should have all been cleared up and everything but i think that the last group did not understand that by us approving that and moving it on it locked them into having to do that i don't, don't think that was their intention that's the only thing i'm about. My concern is we don't want people to get the impression that you can submit a substandard set of plans and come to the Planning Commission and get approval subject to staff comments and we got to work it out at the staff right. level. The project needs to be pretty well put together by the time it gets here. As I said, if this had had a couple more comments, it wouldn't have gone on anyway. They just squeaked into a couple. One being not providing the written <coughs> response is always a big concern for me. You know, I'll have to make an apology that I am out of town and tied up in the holidays, and that's no excuse. Um, I should have been a little more diligent about getting the responses back to y'all. Um, I drove over here to be a part of this, and it won't happen again. We can get you all the responses with no changes uh, within... What's, he already has them. We just have not submitted them in writing. So um, if there's any forgiveness for being an out-of-town guy, we want to do business here. So. Not out of town, though. Well, if we do vote on this and it does not pass. We'll put it back on the agenda for next time. Okay. Hopefully with... All comments have been addressed except for all comments from utility companies need to be, need to be addressed, and that's what we do. Okay. And I, well, one more thing, and I, I, I agree, I don't want us to, I don't want people to submit sub, and so that you have to sit here and try to rack your brain and us design these things at this meeting. I completely agree with that. Maybe we should standardize a, if there are, once you pass five or however many on, it doesn't make it to this meeting well, at all. Well, we, we pretty well went with 20 to 25. If you get over that limit, you don't get to see it anyway. And if there are major issues, you don't get to see it anyway. This one's pretty borderline at this. That's the only reason it's still on here. Right. So how long have, have they had to respond with written requests? Technical plat review was, what date was it in the was on the 16th and they have to resubmit the next week.
I mean, that's the way the schedule is. The and technical so, plan review is set on a Thursday. They have to the following Wednesday to respond with all of written responses and all the new information. So we got holiday involved in there. So yes, I, and then we had I'll all last that. week to sit down and work with. Had all with. last week, so. And we have done some. We spent some time with uh, the one, uh, the church, trying to get everything up through today, trying to make sure we got everything taken care of. Because if you look at what I read and what was on the written ones sure. in your packet, those things were addressed before today. Yeah, we're always constantly eliminating comments as we progress towards the The written request is my hang-up. Sorry? The response is my hang-up. I'm not worried about the other stuff, but that written response is, yeah, I mean, that's crucial for everything else. That response and it's still not in. And as I've told lots of, lots of engineering staff and developers, to say noted does not answer the question. You have to tell us how you are addressing it. I put it on the plans, I'm asking for a variance, you find it on this sheet. Just to say noted doesn't cover it either. Sure. We need to know that you're really responding exactly. to it as well. Exactly. And I tabled a couple of them because it said noted. Give us a response. Yeah, so. so can we do that in the future before it comes to us to make sure that that is done? If you want to tell me that I can't put it on here, if I don't have a written response, you won't get another one without it. Or if you want five outstanding issues, you tell me what you want and we'll, we'll make sure that happens. If the planning department says we need these addressed in a written response before it comes to the plan commission, I think that needs to be addressed before it comes to the planning commission. I don't see that as any different request than when you say, are you someone who's been um, have you have the signature to represent someone else? You wouldn't. We wouldn't sit here and debate that. They either have it or they don't. They either have the responses or they don't. I'm all in favor of this being tabled. If the applicant would like for that to be tabled, vote on it. If you vote it down, he's got to bring it back anyway. So, do you want to request just, it to I'm be tabled let, or do you want it voted know. on? That, the question is yours. I don't think it's going to hurt to yeah. vote on it. On that so if we bring it for a vote and it fails, we submit it and it comes back in December, correct? It's back in January. January. Yes. Or I'm sorry, in January. Yeah. yeah. And if you table it, it comes back, back in January. January. So it's the same either way. Right. Well, we, might, we might as well put it to a vote. If six and one half a dozen the other. First, we have to get a motion to approve subject to staff. Oh, we need a call for the vote for the. Oh, for the concept of detention. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was just going to make one last comment. I mean, I, I agree with uh, Mr. Powell as far as in the future, written response. I mean, if it doesn't have that, then we don't need to hear it in, in the future. Okay. Um, I would say for me on this particular circumstance, I mean, just listening to this a bit further. Um, <clears throat> I don't think we'll have this issue from you guys going forward no. <laughs> in there. And, and, and what I'm hearing is, is that um, I think we're going to have a pretty, pretty strong sense of urgency as far as to address these things. Um, that's just my comments associated with that. But um, if we have a call for the vote for concept of detention. Call for the vote on the Call for the vote by Mrs. Haney. And the concept of detention was OK? As is. OK. A comment about it. Helpert. Yes. Haney? Two votes. Yes. <coughs> Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Mm -hmm. Powell? Yes. Compton? Yes. Concept of detention passes 6 0. We need a motion to approve subject to staff comments. Motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Covert? Second. Second by Mrs. Haney? Haney? No. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Powell? No. Compton? Yes. Covert? No. It doesn't pass. Three to three. Three to three is a tie vote, so it doesn't pass, so you all have to come back in. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, next section Board of Adjustments, uh, B17 60, <coughs> Southwest Springdale 49 LLC, uh, 3829 South Jean George Parkway, variance for sign ordinance uh, presented by Greg Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Greg Taylor with the Griffin Company of Realtors, working on a project at the corner of Don Tyson and 56th Street. And we uh, 
want to put up some development signs on the project and we're asking for a variance on the signs. We're outside the overlay district. We're outside the overlay district, yeah. That's why there's a sign variance. <laughs> they can't have one if they were in the overlay district, okay. Staff comments? I don't have any comments for okay. this. Any questions or comments from the audience? Let's do the commission. Call for the vote. Call, Call for the vote. vote. Call for vote by Mr. Powell. Powell? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. Haney? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Adjustment passes 6 0. Thank you. Thank you. Next item B 17 61, North Lake Storage, 3924 South Old Missouri Road, variance for modification of commercial design standards. <coughs> Presented by James Cook. Hello, uh, my name is James Koch. I'm the engineer for the large scale development, and I'm also the representative for the uh, variance request here. Okay. Staff comments? Tell us what you want to do. Uh, they, the developer is wanting to um, <coughs> consider the, the replacement of the old house that's the uh, that's there now functioning as the office for the storage units with a rail car that they will refurbish and um, install there in place of the uh, old house that is probably the best example of a caboose that i can find uh, in our in our region um, off of Dixon Street, um, that is the style of car that they're wanting to use. Of course, if uh, you know they get approved to do this, then what they would do is buy a car, bring it out, refurbish it, uh, clean it up, uh, install um, everything that they need to install in order to make it a functioning office building. Has so. to meet building code, fire code issues. That's right. For yeah. it to be used. Yes. Um, I did have How a does it get tied down? Uh, well, uh, this particular one was actually welded to the tracks, and they did have some tie straps to anchors, but, you know, I've never seen, well, I have, but um, they are pretty stable, um, so I know that there's some specific criteria that Ed's probably going to want to look at there. Um, I did have a conversation with him and uh, made the developer aware of it that, hey, look, you know, Ed's going to have some concerns, uh, you know, in order to meet code requirements, be prepared for that. So um, that, um, that is something that they are expecting to, to have to go through if, if that is something that, that does get approved and they actually uh, do this, okay. Okay. But we don't know what the one that they're planning on using, we don't know what it looks like. They haven't, they don't have it yet. Well, it's, it's not refurbished, and, and that's really all I know about it. So it is a caboose. Um, it is not a refurbished uh, rail car yet. Um, that is why we're here. Can we even do it? And so, um, you know, if, if you guys have some additional considerations that need to be addressed, I'm sure they would uh, certainly be willing to do that. Um, we just we just need to know what that is. If it's something that you're wanting to do, it's such a rare uh, thing here um, for this. I, I'm really not sure what else I, I can provide to you. Yeah, I, staff didn't have any other comments from your other caboose refurbishing projects around the city. <laughs> it's very <laughs> unique. Yeah. Very unique. It's at a location that you would not normally want think you would see a caboose either. You know, yeah. There's no rail service any place close. So well, they're setting the bar as far as what it should look like on that. So, yeah. any questions or comments from anyone in the audience to the commission? So, how so, far off of the uh, right of way are we, is that plan on being? Um, well, the the it's at the back of the existing house right now. I don't know if you can see the outline right there where I'm kind of pointing to where the existing office is. Uh -huh. So it's probably an additional uh, 15, 20 feet from that. So it's even further off the right of way than the existing house. Okay. To answer your question, I don't know what that dimension is right now. Um, I may have that somewhere else, but it's not on, on the exhibit that I've got here in front of me. So, so the entire house will be removed? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, so at least it would give us larger front lawn than they currently have. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. I'm just thinking about people driving down through and say, oh, look at that. And we got a concrete island divided highway right in front of them. So. Yeah. Yeah, 
That's right. I, I think it's pretty unique. The only, kind of intriguing. The only thing that I'll say is to me, it is cool, but it is to me it is akin to approving a variance on what everybody here at this doesn't like to do is approve variances for modification to commercial design standards and we have we don't we don't have anything i mean we just had, had a whole conversation about this exact thing and we don't we have a picture of another rail car but not that rail car even, even before you know before or after it's refurbished or any, i mean i just don't know how i can i agree with you 100 percent. i i think it's really cool too i think it's gonna be something really neat that they can that's going to separate them probably from any other storage building around however we can't make a determination that it's okay because it's just a storage car, but it's not okay because it's three buildings, or it's not okay because we have five things from them, but not okay because we have 15 from them. If we're going to raise the bar of what the Planning Commission stands for in the city of Springdale, then we have to be consistent. And sometimes that means uncomfortable calls, and sometimes that means it's extenuating something 30 days till someone has time to pull it together. But we have to get past the, for lack of a better term, good old boy system of, ah, it's okay, we'll swing by the office tomorrow. It, you just can't do it. That's not that you're never going to get to the next level if you continue to play on the old field. Exactly. I, I, I don't think this is any different than any other building that we would There's, have come through. I just want like an I, artist, but it is unique. Or something. I would tell you I like my husband idea. is a train buff, so I like trains. I've seen a lot of trains. There's a big variance on what a caboose looks like. You're right. So if you are telling us that's not the one, that's right. It's just a, it it's just be, an example of what it, a refurbished one looks like. That's correct. Yes. There could be a very yeah. wide difference right. from what you can find available yeah. and what you're going to do with it. So I think with something that unusual, we'd want to see a lot closer to exactly what you're going to do. Yeah. And so what I, what I'm hearing you guys ask for is, is something similar to what other developments, um, would, um, typically be required to do is to submit to you an architect's rendering uh, uh, or something equivalent to that describing uh, the color, the railing, uh, the uh, facade, um, everything about the, the actual item. The and, and, uh, and, then, and, then, and then that's something that um, you could uh, f further consider here. And I just don't think that they were ready or willing to do that uh, for this. They were more or less wanting to say, can we do it? Um, and if that's something that we can do, uh, then we'll meet, you know, whatever requirements they have. And, and what that's essentially What you're hearing is it. everybody kind of likes the idea, but they can't approve it until they see what it looks like. Yeah. And it's probably the best you're going to get right now. And, you know, on, on these projects and any other project like this, I explain that to the developers that are submitting. I'm like, look, the more information you can give them, the more unknowns you can remove from this, the easier it is for them to approve it. So... I understand what your comments are, um, but you know, he just, they're, they're wanting a unique item out in front of their business so that people can reference it by, you know, that item. And, you know, if that's what you're going to require, then, you know, Hey, we can, and, and you, you decide not to vote for this, then, then I know how to advise them to, to bring it back if it is really something they want to do. So fully understand uh, oh, what you're saying. Yeah, my recommendation yes. is that we do table it, um, but that's up to you. This whole piece. Call for the vote and turn it down. He's got to do the same thing. Or you can table it. Um, you know, if I table it and they say, oh, we just don't want to go through with it, then I can just call you and say, we'll take it off the agenda. So let's table it, okay? Um, I, I take it that everybody is going to vote no until they see additional information. Um, and that's kind of the assumption that I'm going to make. Well, here. when you go back to them, I think you yeah. are hearing from this group. We like the unique characteristics and how it differentiates itself. Yeah. Just not enough information yeah. at this point in time to, yeah. to have a confidence as far as yeah. a modification of commercial design standards. I'm sure. Thinking, so. No worries. Uh, thank you very much. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Next item, B17-62, Aaron and Pam Shigley, 1406 Wilshire Drive, variance for reduction of side setback from eight feet to seven feet six inches presented by Aaron and Pam Shigley. Yeah, I Aaron Shigley, 1406 Wilshire Drive. 
Uh, when they put this building up, I guess they measured a little bit wrong, but um, I've got my neighbor sitting right here the, the, to that east side, and she uh, can tell you that's just okay. But that six inches is not hurting anything. When I got the permit, they said eight feet from any permanent structure on the sides, and the only structure there is a fence. Mike, you don't know, is Misha back there? For how we got this. Sure. Mr. Shigley got a permit on the 21st day of July. Ten days later, we did an inspection. The building is existing. It's a great looking building. It appeared to be substantially in the rear setback and somewhat in the side setback. As it turns out, fortunately, it's only in the side setback the six inches. That's how we got here today. So he built a building, and this is a fence that goes? Yes, neighbors. Okay, but what he says, what he's asking, okay, so this is really a setback variance for a structure, not the fence. Right. Okay, that's what's confusing, because it says you built a fence on the property line and encroached into the side setback by six inches. That's what threw me. I couldn't figure out how the fence got to be an issue, but it's actually a building? It's the building that is six inches closer to the fence than so was it advertised as a fence variance or a it's a setback variance is what it was at okay so we're, we should be okay <coughs> should be fine the six inch variance okay any other comments okay it's to the commission Pick call for the vote call for a vote by mr covert covert yes haney Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Powell? Yes. Compton? Yes. Adjustment passes 6 0. I appreciate you guys for your patience. This Thank you. Down here. So it's difficult to be the last one on that one. So, uh, director's report? Uh, we're set for next Wednesday at, not back at 6 30? Sure. Yeah, 6 30. 30. Hope everybody, I know. We'll be out of town, but okay, we'll Andy. be back for Thursday. Gary will be out of town. Bevy, are you going to be here? Kevin? I'll be here. Okay. So it's the 13th? It is the 13th. <coughs> and then Merry Christmas Springdale is the next night. As far as I know, we're going to be here. Okay. I'm putting you down so you better well, put be me down. there. Put me down. Because Peyton, are you going to be here? 13th, yeah. Do we need to read? I was going to say, if, I mean. I've got it. It's okay if we move it Let to January if we yeah. need to <laughs> on there. That's, that's the question I'm fixing to ask. We got several. I mean, Dale's prob probably won't be able to be no. here on that Do we one. want to reschedule it for January instead of trying to do it in December? It's six and a half. It, it really, it, I would feel badly if you moved it just for. Uh, we've, got we've, got, we've got quite we a few out. three right here. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and make a decision. We moved it to January. There you go. Okay. Good job, Chairman. And what are we doing? We've been here long enough tonight. We're in charge. Take charge. We're just moving that to January. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope you feel bad. I, I don't feel bad at all because we have <laughs> brought up. Um, all because of Mr. Covert traveling. On that. <laughs> why we're, thank you so much. Why we're talking about the City of Springdale uh, Christmas event. Last year, Randy uh, used some of the city planning commissioners to help run uh, out stuff to folks because there's so many things that Randy and his wife and all that team do a great job of pulling together. Um, I told him that we would be there again this year for him if he needed us. So I volunteered mostly just you, Brian. Um, but but if you if they if they need help, we'd we'd like to you know be there for them. So they put a lot of work into that, and we can help them if possible. <laughs> Very good. How many of you will be at City Future starting tomorrow? Be on Thursday morning. We'll be there tomorrow. Yeah, so we got, Dale and Dale was going to try to if he feels like it. So we're going to have a good planning commission turn. Shannon's going to be there too. So, so okay. that's all I have. Um, the question I have as far as the calendar for next year, will we vote on that? And or did we already do that last month? Okay. Um, and then there are two uh, planning commissioner. Uh, I think both of our positions the end of January, uh, um, and then. I guess as far as officers on this, we'll have to vote on that in February time frame. Okay. I just want to make sure that that's out there and the awareness on there. So. If you want to continue the position. Okay. Anything else? Well, thank everyone. Appreciate all you guys for being in attendance. Meeting adjourned.